here at Venom Outdoors. We're often asked by our customers how and why the Venom floats are truly adjustable. That's what we're going to focus on in this video here. We're going to do some math, talk a little bit about physics. We're going to keep it simple, so don't get intimidated by that. Let's head over to the whiteboard. Alright guys, let's start out by talking about size, density, and volume of components, and how that pertains to buoyancy. Keep in mind that we're trying to keep this video simple, so there's going to be a couple of variables that we're going to leave out of the video, once again just for simplicity reasons. Let's start out by, with our water weight. The weight of water at 60 degrees Fahrenheit is .578 ounces per cubic inch. And if you have two identical volumes, same shape, same sizes, anything with a density of less than .578 ounces per cubic inch will float. Anything that's heavier and more dense than .578 ounces per cubic inch, it will sink. So up on our left of our whiteboard here, we have two volumes that are identical, two cylinders. We have one that we've called foam, one that we've called water. The foam, obviously, we were talking about fishing bobbers, so that's why we brought that in. Now to figure out our volumes, or our volume of these two cylinders, our equation is pi times r squared, which is a radius squared, times the length, and that gives us our volume. Pi, that's already known, 3.14, and then our radius is 1.128, it's an oddball number, we'll explain why we use that in a moment, 1.128 divided by 2, which is 0.564, that squared is 0.318. Now our length is 1, so if we take 3.14 times 0.318 times 1, we get 1 cubic inch. So nice, easy numbers for us to use. So if we use our, take our 1 cubic inch, multiply that times our 0.578 ounces per cubic inch, we get our 0.578 for our water weight of that volume. On our left with our foam, same size, same volume, we have basically given the foam a, just a random density. Simple number of 0 0.100 ounces per cubic inch. So if we do our math on that once again, we get the same volume, one cubic inch times that 0 0.100, and we have a total of 0 0.100 ounces of weight. Now if we take our water weight and subtract our foam weight, that will give us the number that this piece of foam is able to suspend in water, which is 0 .478 ounces. So if, uh, if you're talking about a jig, if we put a jig on this foam at 0 .478 ounces, that would bring us exactly to the water weight, which would be neutral buoyancy. So if we had less weight than that, it would be more of a positive buoyancy. You'd have foam sticking up out of the water. Anything heavier than 0.478 ounces, it would sink. All right, guys, let's take what we learned just a moment ago, and let's apply that to the Venom floats and talk about why they're truly adjustable. In this drawing that we have here on the whiteboard, we've got our water level even with the top of the foam insert, so it's at about neutral buoyancy. The water itself is only able to see the outside surface areas of the bobber. So the water is not being displaced by anything down inside the lower body. The water doesn't know what's down inside there. So we're hiding some of our foam volume down inside the lower body so the water doesn't get displaced by that volume. Now let's say we want to add on a heavier jig, but we want to be right back in neutral buoyancy. What we do is in our with our red lines that we have here, if we were to pull our foam insert out, just like we do with the real bobber, we go ahead and pull that out. What we did was we introduced a brand new volume of foam. Now we talked about the weight of foam and the weight of water. We know that the weight of the foam is lighter than the weight of the water. So if we subtract, if we did the math on this volume and subtract that volume's weight in water and subtract the weight of foam, we would know how much more this bobber is able to hold up just by those dimensions that we pulled that foam insert out. Hopefully that's clear. Um, once again, when you pull the foam out, we introduce a brand new volume that is lighter than the weight of the water, so the water is being displaced by that volume. Now the bobber is able to hold up a larger jig, 
if you twist the foam insert down in, it's going to go down in buoyancy, so it's uh, able to be set at neutral buoyancy with a lighter jig. If you have a minnow, say you're fishing with a crappie minnow, if you go to a fat head, it has more pull on your bobber. If you pull that foam out a little bit, now your bobber is more resistant, so you have more buoyancy there, so the minnow is not as easily going to be able to pull that bobber down. Alright guys, to expand a little more upon uh, what we had talked about earlier, we can have a similar or the same volume of metal in two components, but they'll act differently in water. Right here in my hand, I've got a pin-on weight of ours that's unpainted, and it is the same exact volume as the pin-on weight that we have smashed into the shape of a boat that is now floating in the water. This pin-on weight here would sink like a brick, and we'll show that in a moment. Just by changing the shape of the one that's in the water, what we did was now we're displacing more water. So the, the weight of the water that's being displaced is more than the weight of the lead. So that weight actually floats. That's a lead boat, if you will, that's floating in the water. Alright guys, here we'll drop our pin on weight in and show you that it just sinks right to the bottom. Alright guys, up until now we've talked about changing the volume of the bobber without changing the weight of the bobber. Now let's talk for a moment about changing the weight of the venom floats to change its buoyancy. There's a lot of times where sinkers are not desired on your line. Clear water, shallow water, if the fish are being spooked or nipping at the sinkers, or on your flasher if you just simply do not want that on your flasher. We have the pin on weights for that. Uh, type of application. What we're doing is we're actually changing the weight of the bobber now with the with the pin on weights. If we add a pin on weight, we're adding weight to the same exact volume. So the bobber is going to sink deeper in the water. So you can obtain that neutral buoyancy like we want most of the time ice fishing with a tiny jig down below. We can go all the way down to ten thousandths of an ounce for jig size. Now keep in mind, even with the pin on weight inside, we can always add a sinker. We just pull a little bit of foam out of the top once again to accommodate that new weight. Not a problem. But the design was basically based upon adding those tiny jigs down below without having to have a sinker on your line. Keep in mind, they don't have to be used with the short foam insert. You can use them with the long foam insert. That will help the bobber stand upright because we're weighting the bottom of the bobber but yet we'll get our foam to stick out a lot farther so it's more visible. You'll see some of those uh, details in video one. Alright, there's one more thing I'd like to throw in here while we've got this uh, illustration up on the board. Let's talk for a moment about negative buoyancy. The Venom floats are capable of positive, neutral, and negative buoyancy. With negative buoyancy, basically it means it sinks. Now if we have our bobbers at a neutral buoyancy, and we twist our foam in just a little bit, very, very little, the bobber will actually sink at a super slow rate of speed. So now you can tune the rate of speed just by twisting your foam in or out. It's a new luxury that wasn't available before the Venom floats. So now if you're watching your flash, or you can tune your buoyancy to negative buoyancy and actually let your jig, jig and uh, bobber fall slowly down through the column of fish or whatever there is down there, it looks more like a naturally sinking prey. You can jig that back up and let it fall again. Do that as often as you want. If you get tired of that, want it back at neutral buoyancy, just pull that foam out a little bit and you're done. Alright guys, hopefully the video clarified how the Venom floats work. If you do have any questions, feel free to get a hold of us on our website. Just drop us an email or give us a phone call. We'll be happy to answer any questions that you might have. All of us at Venom Outdoors would like to thank you for watching the video, thank you for your business, and good luck out there on the ice.